Well, good evening and welcome to the Arbor Hills Nature Preserve in Plano, Texas for part one of what I hope to be a three-part evaluation of the new Phoenix HP 30R V2 headlamp. This is a brand new offering from Phoenix billed as a search and rescue headlamp. And since my use case is wilderness search and rescue, uh, the appeal should be obvious, although for many others, there may be a significant question as to whether or not this is the right headlamp for you. And so I hope to make uh, significant progress on answering those questions tonight. Now, part one tonight, we'll just be talking about the light, its operation, and we're going to get out here in the nature preserve and get a first look at what the headlamp can do in territory. Part two, I will take the headlamp out to the LBJ grasslands outside of Decatur, Texas, and put it through a detailed search and rescue training exercise, something on the order of two and a half, maybe a little over three hours. Now, I've never done this before, so it'll be interesting to see how this all works out, but for part three, I have been looking at the burn down chart for this headlamp, and Phoenix is advertising some very impressive run times at what I would consider a historically high level of illumination. Of course, if you've seen any of my other reviews, you know that I don't care too much about charts and theoretical features and appearance and manufacturers and so forth. I care pretty much about one thing. How does the headlamp perform in the field under realistic circumstances? So. I've kind of envisioned a roughly six, six and a half hour land navigation exercise where I'm gonna take this headlamp out and see if it really can perform at the level that they advertise for the amount of time that they advertise. But for tonight, let's talk about the light itself. Item number one is cost. If you're determining whether or not this headlamp is for you, as of the night that I am recording this video, this headlamp is listed for $219. Now, if you join the Phoenix Loyalty Program, they will give you a 20% coupon off your first purchase. I think it's Phoenix USA 20. Uh, that'll get you 20% off, and so by the time you add back tax and shipping, it's still gonna be about $200 direct to your door. Now, for me and a lot of other people, that's an expensive headlamp. For search and rescue, for something I could use to save someone's life, that's an easy cost. If you're just interested in night hiking and basic night activities over well-groomed trails and well-defined territory, this may be overkill. So first up, what do you get for your 200 bucks? Well, let's move around here and you can see already let me turn this around. That's a big light. Let me compare it to my previous primary headlamp, which was the HM65R-T. You can see, at, even at the angle, let me get it back up here. Yeah, that, uh, that 30R V2, which henceforth shall be called the 30, is a much bigger unit. <laughs> You also have to consider that the 65 here, this has the battery and the light all in the same housing. So this is a very compact, very lightweight unit. The battery pack for the 30 is right there. That's even bigger. Two 21700s, a lot of power, will also charge your devices. Now, if you don't want to wear it on the back of the headlamp, strap, you can take that off and then Phoenix provides you with this. You can slip the battery pack into there and then clip it onto the strap of your ruck or maybe a belt. Now you have to use a different power cord that they provide here. Not really my style per se. I don't like the idea of having an extra cord 
to deal with going between my uh, ruck and headlamp. If I come across somebody and they're injured, the first thing on my mind is first aid, ripping that ruck off, getting it open, getting to whatever gear I need. I don't, I don't wanna have a cord getting in the way. Uh, if I'm moving through trees and there's, just, there's a lot of trees and brush around me, a cord is just another thing that can get hung up. And, you know, imagine that you're trying to move through all of that and all of a sudden the uh, power gourd gets pulled out of your headlamp and then now you go immediately dark. But if that mode of operation appeals to you, you do have it. Okay, next item, operation. This is also uh, different. If you've used Phoenix headlamps before, let's go back to this uh, 65 then you see the two buttons. Press and hold to activate the flood. Press again to cycle through the flood modes. Press and hold to activate the spot. Press again to cycle through the spot modes. Extremely simple UI. Only problem that I've had with it, and I've mentioned this ever since my first headlamp review of the Petzl Swift RL, is that if you want to go back and forth just between two modes, let's say high and turbo, you don't have the option to move backwards. You can only cycle forward. Well, the good news is that with the uh, operating controls of the 30, that has changed. You now have this dial right here. So you think of it as moving forward and backward. So when my head is facing this way and I move the dial forward or clockwise from this orientation, then I'm activating the flood opposite, excuse me, I'm activating the spot opposite for the flood. So let's see how that actually works. So I'm gonna hit the neutral or off position now. One back, which is a very definitive click, turns on the flood. Then as I keep going, I go all the way up to max flood. So that's three back, opposite direction, three more, I'm off. Then I can go four forward, and I'm activating the spot modes. And then back. So that's fairly simple. Now, you may ask, well, wait a minute. I read online that you could have the uh, spot and the flood going simultaneously. That's how you get up to that huge 3,000 lumen uh, amount. How do you do that? Well, I like to keep it really simple. First, let's move the flood all the way forward. All right, I'm maxed out, excuse me, I'm maxed out on the spot, sorry. Now, I press the button. Now I have max flood, max spot. Then I can just go back or counterclockwise from this direction, and I'm backing off the modes from there. And so I'm backing off my combined modes until I'm down at the bottom and then just forward if I want to go full on. So I've got 3,000, 1,800, then we drop way down to 400, then to 100, then you can go back off. I guess I don't understand the drop from 1,800 down to 400. I would have preferred uh, 800. That would have been much more usable from a, from a search perspective. 400 is okay if I'm just moving through well-groomed territory and I'm just interested in seeing kind of what's barely ahead of me, but I, th I think Phoenix kind of missed out on an opportunity there. I would have much rather seen that third step to be down to 800 or 1,000 and then make 400 the uh, lowest mode. So I think they may have missed out on an opportunity there. You also saw that I had just a little bit of trouble with that that button part of that is the give when I when I push here but I want to make a comment that oftentimes I'll have these on uh, I work with gloves a lot so being able to work with equipment with my gloves on is very very important I really think Phoenix could have made this whole assembly maybe 10% bigger with a more definitive click and would have been much better for gloved operations. So I think we have a couple of missed opportunities there. I don't know that they're showstoppers. I have operated with gloves on and it does work. I just think it takes more time and effort to get used to using it with gloves than say something like this. So that's about all I have to say 
about the headlamp. Well, that's not entirely accurate. I have one question I need to answer right now, because if I don't, I know it's going to come up in the uh, comments. And that is, you know, yeah, Jim, we've seen all your previous videos and how you like to get on your soapbox and preach about ounces or pounds and pounds or pain and small form factors and getting the most out of your weight budget. You know, what are you doing with this behemoth up on your bump helmet? And that's a good question. In fact, it was one of the first questions I had when I saw this uh, headlamp. And what I'm envisioning is a situation where I'm going to be able to replace one of the shoulder mounted lights that I would normally have on my Rook with the power from this spot. That takes a flashlight off the right strap of my Rook, which is particularly valuable if I'm ever running a long gun for defensive reasons. I don't want anything interfering with my, uh, my two-point sling. Since the battery pack is capable of charging devices, I can also shed the Poseidon Dark Ener Energy Charger that I normally carry. So yes, I'm adding one more piece of heavier, bulky gear, but I'm also simultaneously removing two other pieces of gear, and it actually nets out in my favor. So the real question and the subject of these evaluations is, does the light perform up to expectation and justify uh, its addition and the removal of that extra gear? Well, I'm sure you're tired of listening to me. Quite honestly, I'm tired of listening to me. So I'm going to let the sun go down a bit more here, and then we'll get it out in the field and see what it can do. Well, I've done a number of videos out here at the uh, preserve, including two on the HM65R-T, and this is becoming almost an iconic opening shot. I'm walking towards the bridge. If you go back and look at the HM65R-T cold weather review, you'll see this same shot. Now I'm in 400 lumen combined mode. And as you can see, if I'm just following uh, a well-defined trail in front of me, this is a perfectly acceptable illumination mode. There's probably quite a bit of noise, but I can see the bridge, I doubt it's showing up on the iPhone, but let me go ahead and knock it up one level. Now that's 1800 lumens, and I can see well past the bridge. There's a lot of dust and, and haze in the air tonight, and that's going to interfere with the performance of the uh, lamp, but still. Uh, I think it's useful to evaluate gear under all circumstances. This is just, uh, I mean, I have to say flat out amazing. The iPhone is not doing it justice for sure, but uh, I think this, uh, this 1800 combined mode, once I get out to the LBJ grasslands, is going to be kind of my favorite. It will take the place of that 400, 400 or 800 lumen mode that I liked in the HM65R-T. Now, I, I know you just are dying to see what 3000 lumens looks like. Don't worry, we'll get there. First, we're going to go down to the bridge, and then we'll take a look at the individual flood and spot modes. Then we'll get out deeper into the preserve. Well, this has also become another iconic position, although you probably can't see much of anything. I'm in the lowest flood mode, so let me go to medium, and then this is high, so we're at 1,000 lumens on the flood. Now as I move forward, we'll go back down through the off position. Now I'm in spot, that's the lowest spot mode. And that's all the way up to highest spot, or 2,000 lumens. Then I press the button. Now that's 3,000 lumens. And then I can back off there to 1,800 and back off to 400. So that'll give you an idea of kind of how uh, everything looks. But we'll go see what the 3000 looks like. Um, 
out in more wide open territory. This is another area I like to stop at. We've got some people off in the distance. A lot of people come out here and look for owls and other critters. They're off to about my uh, two o'clock position right now. But the reason I stop right here, so it's fairly wide open and there's a tree out in the distance. I'm lighting it up right now with the uh, TK-16 V2. And with all the haze and particulates in the air, I know it's about 120 yards from this position and uh, I can barely see it. And this is uh, over 3,000 lumens. But the part I can see, I'm getting very good definition. So what I wanna do now is I'm, in, I'm gonna turn this off. I'm in 400 lumen combined. I'm gonna pop that up to 18. Now to the full 3,000. And although I've got a very good view in terms of width, it's not really lighting up that tree to the same degree that the uh, TK-16 V2 was, but we can have some fun. We can put them both together. And now I've got over 6,000 lumens down on that tree. And uh, it's really showing up good with the unaided eye, even with all the haze and junk we have in the air. It may actually even be showing up on the uh, iPhone. So I thought that was just kind of a, an interesting comparison. This is another interesting area, and I think it makes both a good headlamp and flashlight test. More for flashlight, just because of the distance well across to the other side of the creek and on up the hill the other side. This is something I would more normally have to use a flashlight to get more detail. Now I'm running in 400 lumen combined on the headlamp and of course one of the things I want to do is see how effective this headlamp may be at eliminating a flashlight so I want to turn it up into 1800 now and yeah that's absolutely awesome. I can see all the way up to the top of the hill and, and back into the trees. Of course the iPhone isn't going to pick up all that detail but uh, yeah, I think from, from the standpoint of the first test that's really useful to me, uh, this is fantastic. This is just what I was expecting out of the headlamp. So let's talk more about actually getting into a search. Now I'm running in 400 lumen combined. Again, certainly adequate for making my way through the territory that is in front of me. But I have a trail shooting off here. I'd like to investigate whether the person I'm looking for might have gone down this trail. I also have an open area to the left and the right that I would normally want to scan. And even in 800 lumen mode on the HM65R-T, these open areas with a little bit of backlighting in the background because we are still inside a nature preserve that is inside a city. We've got light pollution, we've got haze and particulates in the air. I would have to bring a uh, secondary flashlight into use if I wanted to do a good scan across this area, even though it's not really that far. I don't think line of sight, I have anything that's much further than 40 or 50 yards out there. So let me bump the headlamp up again one level. Okay, now that's 1800. I know that's hard to see with the iPhone, but at least I'm getting back to the trees out there even, even though I've got uh, a bunch of haze and that's causing reflections. If I want to go up one more level, there we go. Now we're at full on 3000. And that's literally like having my long throw spot on and maybe a, a supplemental flood. I mean, I can see even way back into that uh, gap. And I know from past experience, that's um, 125 plus yards. And I can see back uh, right into the edge of the tree line there. So this might give me an idea 
you know, if I see just a, a piece of junk or clothing or something that might indicate whether the person I'm looking for came this direction. So back off once more to 1800 and then back down to 400. And there we have it. Okay, here we are at the top of a very small incline and we're, I'm standing on the paved path and I'm looking down right there at the outer loop trail. Now I'm in 400 lumen combined mode. Now I gotta be straight up, I'm starting to kinda eat my words. I honestly thought that this mode wasn't going to be very useful. It, it belonged at the bottom end of the combined uh, display. I still think it belongs at the bottom. I'd love to have that 800 or 1000 lumen step. But in terms of usefulness, I didn't think it was going to be very useful. I thought it would be great, uh, you know, for following a, a dirt road back to the truck or for, you know, a rest interval or something. But as I look down here to the edge of that outer loop trail, which I can actually see with the unaided eye on what I would call fairly bad circumstances for evaluating a light, that's really quite honestly pretty impressive and so this thing reminds reminds me more of the petzl swift rl on medium reactive mode which is a max of 500 lumens in fact when i go out to lbj i'm going to have the uh swift rl with me i may do a comparison just for fun but anyway we've been doing this and all of our other stops so let's bump it up one okay there's 1800 i mean that's literally like bringing uh another flashlight into play and then of course we go for the the grand finale boom there's 3000 and the peripheral illumination isn't picking up on the iphone i mean i i've got a great field of view here but the the spot on this thing this is literally like having a second flashlight available so i can see well down into those trees details of the pathway so uh, again very impressive so here's another interesting area i think this is a a very difficult area to light up with a headlamp this is something i'd normally uh, use a flashlight for we have a trail and then we have a lot of trees in the background and then we have the uh, background lighting from the uh the city which the iphone probably makes makes it look brighter than it actually is first let me light this area up with the tk16 v2 so this is 3100 lumens and again you can just see all the particulates and haze and junk in the air But when I uh, look all the way to the back there, I can see to the edge of the trees with uh, you know this 3100 lumen flashlight. So of course I can illuminate the trail and the surrounding area. Okay, so let me drop that. Now we're looking at the headlamp in 400 lumen combined mode. Let's bump that up one to 1800 and then again to 3000. Now. At this angle, the view is comparable to the TK-16 V2, not as good. And as I scan around, now I can tell that there are trees back there, but I don't have the detail that I had. That's what the, uh, the additional uh, lumens and more importantly, the candela from that flashlight give you. However, just from a, a search perspective, what I would typically do is look down the trail and the surrounding area and then over here towards the creek. 
So from a, you know, a flashlight replacement perspective, that's certainly adequate. And I would still carry the TK16 V2 with me. What I'd be replacing is a uh, floodlight that I would normally have on the, uh, the right shoulder. So I'm, I'm kind of more interested in the combined spot and flood than I am pure spot. So again, this is uh, in line with what I'm looking for. Of course, I always have to stop right here whenever I do a video out at the uh, Arbor Hills Preserve. This is one of my uh, favorite stops. We are in the 400 lumen combined mode. This is going to be my uh, last segment of the first phase of this review. I'm going to have to say this is the um, this is the big surprise. This 400 lumen combined mode just completely blew me away in terms of how usable it is, the amount of downrange situational awareness it gives. It's not great in terms of doing identification, but for detections, basic contour of terrain, eye shine, so forth, um, wow, this, this was the big, this was the big uh, hidden gem in this, in this headlamp. Now, as we go up one more time, 1800 again you can't see the peripheral view that i have with the unaided eye you're just gonna have to take my word for it it's really impressive and then one last time there we go that's what uh the full full on 3000 looks like i'll pan around a bit from a search perspective yeah this is absolutely ideal i think it will definitely allow me to get rid of one of the floods that I normally use. I can keep my long throw spots, either the TK16 V2 or the TK22 UE. I'm really interested in getting this uh, headlamp out to the LBJ grasslands and see what it can do. And that's going to end it for tonight. Stay tuned for part two at the grasslands where we will do a, a detailed search and rescue training exercise. But for night, Arbor Hills Nature Preserve, this is it. I'm signing off. Thank you very much.